Good evening. You're watching the Subversity System President's VChat, a live online video conversation with Dr. Ronald Mason, Jr. I'm Robin Merrick, Director of Alumni Affairs for the Southern University System and Executive Director of the Southern University Alumni Federation. I want to welcome our alumni, our students, our faculty, our stakeholders, and friends to our sixth live web conversation with our SU System President. We appreciate your participation and we look forward to an informative session to highlight the many things going on throughout the Southern University System. We have joining us tonight Dr. Ray Belton from our Shreveport campus, Southern University at Shreveport. He's the head of that campus as Chancellor and he's also the head of our Susla Connect program, which we'll talk more about in a little bit. We also have joining us Dr. William Broussard, who's Director of Athletics here, Southern University and A&M College in Baton Rouge. And we'll close out with our newly elected alumni president, attorney Preston J. Castile, Jr. So those of you, we want to thank you. If you have emailed questions for tonight, we appreciate your emailed questions. But before we begin with Dr. Mason's presentation, I'd like to remind you that you can still send questions to us for tonight for Dr. Mason and any of our special guests who are on. And you can do that by visiting us at vchat at sus.edu. That's vchat at sus.edu. While we may not be able to get to all of the questions this evening during our vchat, a response will be provided to you electronically at a later date following the vchat. So again, we thank you for your participation and your presence here tonight on the vchat. And I think we're about ready to start our conversation with Dr. Mason. So I will turn it over to our system president, Dr. Mason.
I just got unmuted. Can you hear me? No, you can hear me. So, can you hear me now? So, testing, testing. Testing, it doesn't say muted. Well, no, what does it say? It's unmuted. Okay, you can hear him now. Sorry, so you can hear Okay, so, all right then. All right, so, uh, so I just found out that uh, you didn't hear a word I said for the last 10 minutes, right? Uh, let me just. Good, okay. You heard me, Preston? I did. Oh, okay. So apparently we just couldn't be heard here on the campus. Well, that's fine then. Um, I'm going to trust Preston that uh, you heard everything that I said, uh, and we're going to move on from here, which I guess is to hand it back to Robin so that she can uh, move the show forward. Thank you for that, that, that response, Preston, so I knew what was going on. You're welcome. Hey guys, I'm back. I think now we're going to turn it over to, and we apologize for the technical difficulties that we had here. I think some folks could hear us, but some of you could not. So again, we do make those apologies to you. We'll try to capture some of that back in the questions that come for Dr. Mason. We're going to turn it over now to Dr. William Broussard, Dr. 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 Broussard, Let's talk about this upcoming football season. Fall sports. Okay. This. Okay. okay, his mic is unmuted. It did it. I don't. Shall we go to questions? No, I'm off the call. I dropped somehow. Shall we go to Preston? He seems to be uh, I can hear you. Yeah. You're going to have to take I'm it. still on. I'm off. I can't. I'm not up here. Okay. okay to the president. And yes, I can hear you. Well. President introduce Preston. Preston. I'm come off I'm sure he's on here. All right. Am I back online? Yes, sir. Um, okay, I'm hot. A couple of folks are not. We're trying to get it together here, folks. Um, we'll figure it out before the hour's out, but I think that uh, there is communication between me and Preston Castile, president of the Alumni Federation. Uh, we're going to try now to move over to yeah, we're going to try now to move over to Preston and see if we can get him uh, engaged in this conversation. Preston, are you there? I am. Thank you, Dr. Mason. Preston, are you there? I am. Uh, thank you for having me on. Can you hear me okay? Unmute your mic, Preston. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not muted. Can you hear me okay? For those of you who can hear me, uh, I'm Preston Castile, National President of the Alumni Federation. If anyone can hear me, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll just keep on talking in the meantime. Uh, I'm happy to have had the opportunity to serve as your National President for all of five weeks now. Uh, it's been a great run. Uh, let me pause a moment and thank all of the national officers who were elected uh, from the first Vice President Laquita Thomas, our second, third Vice President on down with uh, Betty Pam. I just want to say hello to all of those folks who are national officers. Uh, we have been working very, very hard over the last five weeks and putting together, I think, a great program for the next two years. We're very excited about what we've been able to do to support the university uh, in any way possible. Uh, I will tell you that uh, we're excited more than anything else to have 
uh, an opportunity to help the university in the best way that we can. I know all of you have been uh, reading the news and notes that have been going out announcing uh, many of our initiatives. Uh, we've got a new membership coordinator on board. She's doing a great job already hitting the ground running. It is going just absolutely fantastic with her. She's been on the job all of three days, and I think you will see some renewed programs. Uh, we think the most important thing that we can do uh, as an alumni is help our university, frankly, recruit students. So we're looking forward to that opportunity to recruit as many students as we can. Uh, we've had that same success or some success in the past with our laboratory school. Uh, and for those of you who watched the campaign, you know that I've talked about that for a very long time. And, and we think we can have some similar success helping the university uh, recruit more students. So, uh, again, thank you for the opportunity to serve as your alumni president. And I look forward to the next two years. Thank you. So, thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to apologize once again for our technical difficulties. Preston, thank you for the update of what's going on in the Office of Alumni Affairs and the Southern University Alumni Federation. Uh, bear with us, folks who are watching. Like I said, we have a new crew in place, and I'm going to say that we've got a little bad weather in the area, and our, our uh, Internet's kind of popping in and out here in Baton Rouge, so bear with us on that. Uh, Dr. Broussard, if you can, in fact, hear us. And just give us a nod if you can. You can. Thank you, sir. All right. We're going to now officially turn it over to you, since uh, Preston sort of skipped you there for a moment. We're going to turn it over to the Department of Athletics, and let's talk about fall sports, uh, particularly football and everything else that's going on in athletics. Dr. Broussard. He did. We're actually here and committed uh, over the summer, went to summer school uh, and trained in our strength and conditioning program to prepare themselves for the fall. So they've been working very hard getting ready for their seasons to start. Uh, our soccer team will get things kicked off with our first home event uh, this Friday uh, at A.W. Mumford Stadium, Friday at 6 o'clock versus uh, University of Texas Pan American. They will be uh, the first of our fall sports teams to, uh, to begin their season. Uh, they are uh, beginning a defense of their 2013 Western Division Southwestern Athletic Conference Championship, the first in the history of the program, and looking to build off of last year's successes. Uh, our men's and women's cross-country teams and uh, volleyball teams will uh, begin their seasons actually next week um, uh, with uh, competitions both on the road and our football team uh, will begin uh, officially its defense of its 2013 Western Division and overall SWAT championships uh, beginning the season on August the 30th uh, at University of Louisiana at Lafayette. Uh, we're very excited about <clears throat> all of our uh, returning student athletes and all of those teams getting our seasons underway. Uh, 2013, uh, as I've mentioned previously, was a, a very exciting year for us in the athletic program with five of our teams uh, winning a total of six divisional regular season or tournament championships and placing a number of student athletes both on the all all SWAC performance teams as well as the all SWAC academic teams uh, with uh, 70 student athletes being named the all SWAC academic team. So extremely proud of our student athletes and uh, excited uh, about all of them being back on campus. Um, for those of uh, you out there who follow the football team closely, I did mention that we'll begin our season next week. Our home opener will be on September the 6th, the following Saturday, uh, versus Central Methodist. Uh, we still have season tickets on sale. Uh, the ticket office, uh, uh, you can call at 225-771-3171. And for more information on season tickets, uh, which range from $90 to $252, uh, you can find more information at gojagsports.com. Uh, individual game sales uh, for uh, if you want to purchase tickets for homecoming or for any one of, uh, any one of the games uh, this year. In lieu of season tickets, those tickets will go on sale on September the 2nd. Um, and again, you can call the ticket office, 225-713-171. More information at gojagsports.com. 
but again, uh, very excited about the fall year, very excited about the opportunities that we have to uh, visit with and interact with uh, our alumni and supporters uh, and looking forward to having the opportunity to represent the university this year um, and uh, bring more glory uh, to Southern University, more championships to Baton Rouge and do every, everything that we can to support our student athletes in their pursuit uh, of all of their dreams, both on the field and off. Thanks for everything. God bless the Jaguar Nation, and go Jags. Thank you, Dr. Broussard, for that update on fall sports. And, of course, you know where you can get your tickets for the upcoming season, and we can't wait. He said six home games and six away games. Sounds like 12, 12 games to me that we'll be making this season, Dr. Broussard. Thank you so much for that update. We now have um, our sister campus from the north has joined us. Dr. Ray Belton, I think you're on board. And you got in just in time, sir. We're ready to hear an update from Southern University at Shreveport, better known as Susla. Dr. Belton. Good evening, Robin. Good evening, Robin. Do you hear me at all? Robin, do you hear me now? I can hear you, Dr. Belton. <laughs> I hear you, Cassidy. I'm not sure if they can hear me. Let's see, Dr. Belton, we could in fact hear you, but we're going to pause for a moment if you just bear with us. And we're going to take a few questions for Dr. Mason, okay? All right, Dr. Mason, if you are ready, we have our first question from a 1963 graduate. It's Roosevelt Ludd. And he says he's asked this question before, and it has never totally been addressed. And uh, it's a question that he submitted once before, and he understands that it's a hot potato issue, that the board has been an extra level of micromanagement of the system that has been a pain for as long as he can remember. What value is the system to Southern University? If we no longer had SUNO or SUSLA, how would that affect the Baton Rouge campus and would the Ag Center and the Law Center be adversely affected as well? His understanding is that such a move would eliminate the need for a Board of Supervisors. His concern is primarily about the Baton Rouge campus and what can we do um, in that regard and thanks for your consideration. Dr. Mason? Thank you, Robin. That is a loaded question. Thank you, Robin. That's a loaded question. Uh, but uh, since we're not sure whether folks heard me uh, in the first part of the broadcast, it sort of gives me an opportunity to, to reiterate what I said in the process of answering the question. Um, so the, 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 the concern is about the Baton Rouge campus, and that is rightfully so. The Baton Rouge campus is the flagship of the system. Uh, it was uh, originally founded in 1880 in New Orleans, moved here in uh, 1914, and has been in Baton Rouge for 100 years. Uh, it is the 
flagship of the fleet, and as the flagship goes, so goes the fleet. Now, I think your question also correctly recognized that the flagship has had challenges in the past few months and years. Uh, decrease in enrollment, uh, budgetary challenges, uh, cuts from the state level, uh, things that uh, really need to be fixed uh, as we go forward in this new reality that we're looking at in higher education, not only nationally but also in the state. Uh, you know, nationally, um, Pell Grants are being reduced, uh, PLUS loans, uh, um, all of the ways that Title III programs that fund historically black colleges and universities are being less and less accessible to our students, which means that that is a challenge for us as an institution. Historically black universities are under attack. Uh, ironically, since we have a black president, people are questioning whether we still need uh, black institutions of higher learning. At the state level, we've experienced uh, a lot of cuts, as I mentioned before, but the, but the business model has changed such that most of our money now, 70%, comes from tuition when it used to come from um, from state appropriations. So when you put all of that together, it's clearly a new reality that we're dealing with in higher education. And the question is, how does Southern uh, deal with that new reality? And specifically to your question, uh, what is the best way for uh, the Southern Baton Rouge campus to deal with that new reality? Now, there are two different uh, points of view here. Uh, one is the one that you expressed, which is, why not get rid of the rest of the system and focus on the Baton Rouge campus? In fact, uh, some people have suggested that we uh, shut down Suno, uh, shut down uh, Shreveport, and uh, focus all of our resources on uh, Southern Baton Rouge. Uh, my personal opinion is that that is not the way to go. I think that one of the assets that we have and one of the strengths that we have and which makes us unique in higher education is the fact that we are a system. And in this new reality, there are things that we can do as a system that individual campuses and individual HBCUs cannot do. Uh, for example, uh, we're going to pick up about uh, 800 to 1,000 students this year uh, through our community college on the four-year campuses. If we didn't have a community colleges, those would be students that we would lose uh, within the southern system. But more specifically, uh, it is a feeder system for the four-year campuses, especially Baton Rouge where 700 or more of these students are coming in as community college students, but in a year or two years, they will end up being Southern Baton Rouge uh, students headed toward a bachelor's degree. That is an asset that we can use that we would not be able to use if we want a system. Another one is our online programs. Um, you know, because we have an inventory of programs, from training programs all the way up to PhDs, when you look at us as a system, uh, it means that we have advantages that each of the individual campuses have that as a, in, as a that each of in the individual campuses would not have if it weren't for the fact that we were one system uh, functioning as a whole. So this is basically the question that's going to be put to the board in the next couple of months. Uh, you know, what is the best approach to deal with this new reality? And it is a lively conversation and discussion. Some people think we should close down the system and, and sort of let the campuses fend for themselves. Uh, our recommendation is that we focus on the fact that we are a system, take advantage of that, that, that fact that makes us unique, and use that as a way to confront this new reality to the ben benefit of the system as a whole, but, up, but to the individual campuses as well. I know that was a long answer, but it was a very good question, and it hit the debate uh, and the question, it hit the conversation square on the head about what to do for the future, not only of the flagship campus, but for the system as a whole. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Dr. Mason, for that response. I'll be lengthy. We did get a, a full response there. Uh, we have another question before we go up to Shreveport. Uh, we're going to hear from Melinda, Melinda Carmouche. In the past, the final exam period was longer and included dead days or dead week. Has administration considered the impact of this change to the faculty and students. For instance, nursing students taking two clinical nursing classes generally require a weekend to prepare adequately for comprehensive final exams. This change has probably greatly impacted the attrition rate in the School of Nursing. Dr. Mason. Thank you, Robin. Um, 
I checked with the uh, Baton Rouge campus uh, Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Virginis Peoples, because we had uh, this question in advance. And uh, she gave me an answer that I hadn't thought of, but it does make perfect sense. Um, you know, the Baton Rouge, uh, Southern Baton Rouge now only has classes four days a week, which means that they're closed every Friday. Uh, and those dead days, that you, if you're calling them dead days, that was supposed to be study days and catch-up days, uh, before they went to a four-day week are now uh, on Fridays. So that Fridays are supposed to be used uh, as extra time to study and extra time to catch up on things that you couldn't get done during the course of the week or during the course of the semester. And now whether, you know, candidly in practice uh, the students use those days that way, uh, I, I'm not so sure. So we're revisiting whether the four-day uh, school week makes sense. Uh, we've talked to the deans and we've talked to the leadership on the campus. I think for the most part they prefer to go back to the old system and bring back the five-day uh, school week. Uh, from an educational point of view, I think, I think it makes a lot more sense, as you mentioned in your question. Uh, and I expect that going into next uh, academic year, uh, we'll go back more to the old model and go away from the four-day uh, school week. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Dr. Mason, for that response. Uh, we have one more question before we take it back up to Shreveport. I think they're going to be ready in just a few moments. Uh, this question is from Thaddeus Victor. Dear Mr. President, will Southern University offer more PhD programs in the near future, either on campus or online? Robin, the answer is yes. Uh, as you know, we have uh, several masters and PhD programs on the Baton Rouge campus now. Uh, of course, um, the new model, uh, when you look at the raised admission standards and the fact that Baton Rouge is the flagship, uh, the expectation is that the level of graduate work and graduate study will ratchet up, will start to increase over time. Of course, it will also mean, though, that the overall campus population will probably shrink in the short run and we'll be making up uh, that enrollment through the uh, Community College Connect program with Susla that I, I mentioned earlier. Um, when you look across the system, uh, we just had a proposal for a PhD program from Southern University of New Orleans in, um, in social work. Uh, you know, that is a nationally renowned program and I expect that that uh, will ultimately be approved. Um, and, uh, you know, it, when we look across the system at the inventory of courses, the, the idea is this. Any student that walks into uh, the Southern University system should be able to find a path to success. Whether it's a training program through our community college or whether it's a, a PhD level program through our four-year campuses, especially our flagship. Uh, that is the vision, that is the model. And once the model is in place, then you will see uh, each of the programs in their appropriate place and at the appropriate level start to grow over time. Uh, so from a programmatic point of view, we're very optimistic not only about what's happening on the campuses, but also online for the Southern University system. Awesome, Dr. Mason, thank you again for that response. Okay, folks in Shreveport, Dr. Ray Belton and team, we are ready to take it to North Louisiana. I think you guys are ready. And I hear you talking in there. Okay. We're Good evening, Robin. Uh, and, and greetings from Southern University of Shreveport. I'm not sure if you hear me or not. Robin, do you happen to hear me? I can hear you, Dr. Belton. Okay. Uh, would you just like for me to offer some um, um, remarks about the uh, uh, College Connect program? I'm not getting any feedback. Yeah. 
the rear main. Move it, move it from the top. Hey, Dr. Belton, we hear you loud and clear. We're going to ask that you lower your mic and just keep talking. We can hear you. Okay, you can't hear us because we have to mute so that we can hear you, but keep talking. Dr. Belton, we're going to ask that you bump up your microphone just a tad bit. The folks in the nation say they, they hear you, but you're a little low, so bump it up a little bit more for us. Okay, we have put in place, but we have a little technical difficulty going on on the north end. We kind of control it for this end, but we apparently cannot. So we're going to go back to you, Dr. Mason. We do have a few more questions that have come in since the booth chat got started. And the first question is, how are we looking on freshman enrollment on the Baton Rouge campus? Is it in keeping with where we were in terms of our budgeted numbers? Well, um, we're watching those numbers daily in terms of enrollment on the Baton Rouge campus. Uh, right now, uh, it looks like we're behind last year, and uh, we're, we're a little concerned. Uh, we ran the numbers, that is the budget assumptions, based on a decrease in enrollment of about, of about 150 students. Now, we've been making some extraordinary efforts to um, shore up the enrollment level on the Baton Rouge campus especially uh, through some task forces that we had, joint task forces between uh, the system and the Baton Rouge campus. We did some uh, ad campaigns and telephone calls and uh, Vice Chancellor Dumas organized a, um, a, a phone bank of volunteers to call students to get them to change, uh, finish their applications. So we're doing everything we possibly can 
I think one of the challenges, though, is that it's a real structural problem. You know, when they raise the admission standards for the four-year schools uh, in the state of Louisiana, uh, they really made it difficult for many Louisiana high school graduates to get into these four-year institutions. Uh, the last uh, report I got said that about 8,000 students who graduated from high school in the state of Louisiana were eligible for admission into the four-year schools. So that means that all of the four-year institutions are fighting to and competing for 8,000 students. That's a heavy lift, especially if you don't have your A game with you, and we're still getting our A game together here. Uh, but again, the bright side is that, uh, that you know, for the future, we know we have students coming in through the Susla Connect program. So the ones that we're losing because of the admission standards, we can bring them in through the community college. And I'm sure hoping Dr. Belton get a chance gets a chance to tell you firsthand about his Susla Connect program because it really is a national model. Um, but because of that, we may take a hit in the short run, but in the long run, we see that as being a permanent feeder system, uh, feeding well-qualified, well-prepared students who can't get into the four-year schools into the um, in through the community college to the four-year schools within the Southern system. Uh, so, uh, uh, some of it is still because we're in the process of, of coming back, uh, but um, you know we're doing the best we can to raise enrollment as much as we can through any means possible. Thank you, Dr. Mason. Appreciate that. The question for you as well. It's about the human jukebox. Uh, the marching band, as many of us know, the Southern University marching band is nationally acclaimed and well renowned and was recently named the number two marching band in the country by the NC2A. Recent increases in Southern University enrollment have been partly attributed to the marching band's success at home and abroad. It's no secret that the marching band cannot prosper on the university's funding it currently receives. So the question is, is there a short-term or long-term plan to increase funding for the Southern University Marching Band? And if so, what is it? This question is coming to you from Esau Lalas, Jr. He's a 2001 graduate, and he's also vice president of the Human Jukebox Alumni Association. Well, thank you for uh, that question, and it's a great question from the Vice President of the Human Jute Box Alumni Association. Uh, I could probably get the same question from the um, alumni of the football team, from the alumni of the business school, or from the alumni of the engineering school. Uh, you, uh, you get my point, um, that it is a, uh, a very um, tough process to alloc allocate limited resources across an institution where there are many deserving programs, all of whom, if they were well invested in, could perform at a much, much higher level. Now, having said that, um, um, it's clear that, uh, you know, the, the, the human jukebox is one of the jewels of the institution. It's one of our national faces. Uh, it is the second best band in the land, and we do everything we possibly can to make sure that, you know, it, it maintains the level of excellence that it, is, it, it has exhibited over the course of the years. Uh, we've worked with the campus to uh, secure a new uh, interim director, a young man that came up through the ranks and looks like he's going to do a great job. Um, you know, we're working to bring in uh, more assistant directors uh, because it's 300 students that you have to move around on a regular basis and that's like moving an army uh, and you have to make sure you have the right people in place to make sure that the right things are in place in order to secure the students health and well-being. Uh, so we're very conscious of uh, the importance of the human jukebox. The entire system is conscious of it, uh, but we just uh, need folks to understand that it is a big system and, and a big campus and there are a lot of needs, which brings me to the one big point I guess I can make from your question, which is that, um, you know, we don't get the money we used to get from the state of Louisiana, which means that uh, not only from tuition do we have to be more dependent, but also from contributions from alumni. Uh, if you don't know about the Million Dollar March, uh, you should go to the website and, and, and see what's going on there. It's an opportunity for every member of the Jaguar Nation to help support the institution that they love. If you don't know about the 1880 Society, which is a membership organization for donors who 
uh, the new founders of the Southern, the founders of the new Southern that were building on the traditions of the past. You need to go to our foundation at sus.edu and sign up. We have over 200 members now, and it's growing each and every day. Uh, you know, um, about 2% of the alumni give back. We have 70, 80,000 alumni around the country. If just half of them gave a little something each and every year, uh, all of the pieces of Southern that we love, including the human jukebox, uh, would be much better served now and in the future. So we call you to the task, Jaguar Nation, to get involved in building the new Southern uh, on the traditions of the past. Thank you again, Dr. Mason, for that response. Uh, following that comment that you made in terms of the response of the questions, we do have a, a question that's coming to us from Daryl Hampton, and that is, how are the fundraising efforts for the Million Dollar March progressing at this point? Actually, uh, it's going very well. Uh, I need to mention, uh, in the context of this question, the excellent work being done by the uh, revamped uh, Southern Alumni, uh, excuse me, Southern University System Foundation, uh, under the leadership of Anna Jones, the the president of that board of directors, uh, and the new uh, executive director of the foundation, Mr. Alfred Harrell, who is a Southern alum that we were able to lure into the position, and he's done an outstanding job. Uh, the Million Man, uh, Million Dollar March, uh, at last count, I think, was at about $400,000 and growing. Um, we're ahead of schedule to meet that million dollar mark. You know, it's an Obama style uh, fundraiser where it's all online, it's virtual. We have captains who are responsible for bringing in uh, funds from their teams. I have a uh, I'm a captain myself. If you want to go online and claim me as your captain, feel free to donate some money uh, to the Million Dollar March uh, with me as your captain, and I'll get credit for it. Actually, I, just to, to blow my own horn a little bit, I think I'm the I'm at I'm in the lead among the captains in terms of raising money for the Million Dollar March. So, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm trying to provide the example that we all need in order to secure the future of Southern. But it's going very well. I hope you're a part of it, and if you aren't sign up today because you don't want to miss this opportunity. Okay, my mom's not on. Thank you, Dr. May. We have a motion that's coming to for Dr. Bruce. Are you still with us? The room for you, Dr. Bruce, is an update of R with C2A to whatever extent that you can share the status of that. All good? Okay. Uh, Robin, I, I could not hear your question because you were breaking up. I heard uh, the words NCAA and status, uh, so I'm going to assume that the question is about uh, an update on our <clears throat> ongoing uh, NCAA data review. Um, for, for what we can share, we're in the process right now of completing our 2014-15 uh, fall, fall eligibility certifications, upon which point uh, we will submit that data to the NCAA for review. Uh, upon review, if the uh, data uh, is submitted and determined to be accurate and the policies and procedures which we are using uh, are determined to be in uh, substantial compliance with the NCAA and their expectations, we will then have an opportunity to have, uh, have some of the sanctions that are currently uh, issued to our teams in terms of postseason uh, competition removed. Uh, it is a campus-wide effort. The, uh, the <clears throat> process of certifying student-athletes uh, involves collaboration with uh, faculty, 
uh, the department chairs and, and uh, division of academic affairs, the registrar's office, financial aid, student success, um, as well as individuals working in the athletic department and the coaches uh, and, and uh, our academic advising and compliance staff as well. We have hired a full-time compliance director, Jason Baum, who's been on the job with us for two weeks now and is directing that effort. Um, and again, we have reached out to the campus in an extremely significant way um, and uh, are receiving great cooperation and collaboration uh, with uh, support staff and the faculty across the campus in this effort. Thanks, Dr. Broussard, for that response. That is something that many of our alums are waiting with bated breath to hear just the status of where we are in terms of the NC2A situation. Dr. Mason, we have another question from you regarding the budget situation for this upcoming, this fiscal year, rather, that we're currently in. Just what are the plans to address the budget situation? And also, as part of that question is, what are your plans to uh, amend, or I should say mend, the relationship between yourself and the Faculty Senate on the Baton Rouge campus. Well, it's interesting, Robin, that um, the questioner put those two pieces together, the budget and uh, the relationship with the Faculty Senate, because in a way they, they are intertwined. Um, you know, the campus has been under great financial stress uh, for the last several years, uh, even to the point where um, it had to declare a financial exigency in order to balance uh, the budget one year. Um, and with, uh, you know, lack of raises, uh, furloughs, uh, as I mentioned, declining enrollment, it's been a, 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 a difficult time. Uh, not only for the campus as a whole, but for the system and the campus, because we sit here on the Baton Rouge, Rouge campus. Uh, as, as even though we run the system, we are physically located on the Baton Rouge campus. Uh, so it, it has it has been some some contentious conversations. Uh, the faculty senate uh, represents the faculty, and they have a point of view. Uh, I don't always disagree with that point of view, but they have a constituent with this constituency that they serve, and I respect uh, the fact that they, you know, have an opinion in this matter. Uh, at some point along the way, uh, communications broke down, and I can get into the details about it. Um, but um, it wasn't good for the campus, and it wasn't good for the system in the sense that, uh, you know, we th there was no no communication between me and the faculty senate except by way of emails that were shared publicly. A lot of it with misinformation, but it wasn't the kind of forum uh, in you know where you would clear up that kind of misinformation. Uh, so I've offered more than once to um, sit down and uh, you know with with the leadership of the Senate try to work through the misunderstandings and misinformation. Uh, I've offered to do it publicly. Uh, we've had uh, a member of the Board of uh, Regents, uh, the African American member, Dr. Albert Sam, offered to sit with us and try to work through these things. Uh, the president of the Alumni Federation, who is on this broadcast, has offered to do the same thing. Uh, but the approach uh, seems to be more uh, public uh, confrontation than sit down and try to work it out. Uh, my door is always open. Uh, I'm still willing to, to publicly or privately try to clarify a lot of the misunderstandings, miscommunications, uh, for the sake of the institution, because it has to happen if we're going to move forward together. Uh, but it is a serious budget situation, and one of the things you should know that that we have disagreement over is um, whether or not to merge the two management, the two administrations of the system and the campus. You know, the entire sy system now is only 13,000 students. That's about the size of a medium to small size university. You know, whether we need to have a duplication of administrations in Baton Rouge uh, to have a separate system and a separate campus, I think, is a big question. Uh, you know, our recommendation is to uh, combine the two, uh, have one administration to serve both. We think we can save about a million nine, a million eight dollars, uh, which is a big question from a budgetary point of view. The other approach that we put out there, because some people think that is the way it should happen, is to just uh, se severely downsize the system 
and let the Baton Rouge campus run the campus and the system. It sort of ends up in the same place. It's really just a question of what point of view you look at it from. Uh, but that's a decision for the board. Uh, we gave them options. Uh, they're going to be a healthy discussion at this board meeting, probably the next. But at some point, uh, we're going to have to make a decision on, on where to go with this because uh, the challenges financially are real. Now, before I pass it on, let me just um, uh, say that um, you know, I'm happy to see uh, Presta Castillo come in as uh, Alumni Federation President. He's the general counsel for the foundation, so I've, I've known him in that capacity. Uh, but I also want to mention, while I have him on air, that I got dunked. <laughs> I got ice water on my head today as part of this ice water bucket thing for the uh, uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And they asked me to challenge people to do the same thing, and I thought it was a, a good thing to challenge the new president of the Alumni Federation to get uh, ice bucketed. So I just wanted you to know that if you hadn't seen it on television, people are going to be calling you to let you know that that happened. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Robin. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mason. That's a perfect segue to you, Preston Castile. We want you to give a few closing remarks, but it sounds like you got a challenge to address here in your closing remarks. And uh, uh, we got the ice bucket ready here on campus, so just let us know <laughs> when. <laughs> I am up for the challenge, and of course, we'll challenge all of the uh, alums around the nation, in fact, an entire Jaguar nation, uh, to this challenge. And in closing, I'll say uh, again, thank you, Dr. Mason. We are obviously here to help uh, the entire uh, Southern family. We know that there's a huge challenge ahead. When I walked on Southern's campus about 29 years ago, it was a great institution, and it's a great institution today. Uh, and we're going to continue to work. Uh, alums across the country, we're going to have to do our part. We're going to help as much as we can. We're going to help the university raise money. We're going to make the Jaguar Nation stronger. Uh, we, the Federation, and all the alums around the country are here uh, for the university, for the president, the board, the faculty, the staff. Please call on us. We're here. We're here to help, and we're going to help the institution raise money and make the institution as strong as it possibly can. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, Robin, to serve. Uh, and again, I'll uh, say as others have said, God bless the Jaguar Nation. Go Jags. Thank you, Preston, for that. And like I said, the ice bucket is ready. When I'm ready. You are. We're going to take you back up to North Louisiana and close out with you, Dr. Belton. If you can hear us, just say a few closing words, and then we're going to turn it directly over from there to Dr. Broussard with athletics. Dr. Belton? Hey, Dr. Broussard, Dr. Broussard we're going to we're going to turn it over to you for a couple of closing remarks. 
Thank you, Robin. Uh, once again, uh, anyone interested in purchasing tickets, uh, season tickets for uh, the 2000, 2014 football season can find information at gojagsports.com. Uh, tickets range from $90 to $252, and when you renew your season books, you can also purchase your tickets for the Bayou Classic as well. Uh, season book holders have first priority for purchasing Bayou Classic tickets. Uh, you can also call the ticket office at 225-771-3171 for more information. Uh, the uh, football team will begin their season uh, next Saturday, August 30th at UL Lafayette. Our soccer team will begin its season this Friday at home at A.W. Mumford Stadium in their first game of the season versus UT Pan American. And our volleyball and men's women's cross country teams will kick off their seasons next week as well. Looking forward to a good season. Once again, God bless the Jaguar Nation and go Jags. Thank you, Dr. Broussard. Thank you, Dr. Belton, as well as Attorney Castile. Dr. Mason, we thank you as well for this VChat opportunity. It is our sixth VChat that we have done. We apologize again to all of you who are out there watching in Jaguar Nation for all of our technical difficulties this evening. Our technical team sends their regrets, and we're certainly going to work on that for the future. we got a new team in place, like we said, and a little, little learning curve here, but we're going to get it together. Folks, uh, we want to remind you that you can visit our website at sus.edu for anything that you heard on the VChat today and for more information. And certainly the VChat lines of questions are still open, so if you've got questions that did not get addressed tonight, certainly continue to send those questions to us and we'll have somebody respond to you right away on where we are with those uh, answers to those questions, I should say. In the meantime, folks, we're getting ready for football season. i got to just close it out and say go Jags. And Dr. Mason, if you've got anything else you'd like to close out, we'll happy to turn it over to you. Thank you, Robin. Um, first of all, let me uh, thank our crew here, tech crew. Um, it is a new crew, but I feel like we got it together pretty well after it was all said and done, so let me thank you all for that. Let me thank Henry Tillman, who is organizer, uh, our director of communications, and of course Robin, uh, for, for giving us that professional touch we, we always need. Um, and let me say this. Uh, these are obviously difficult times. You know, the world is changing. Uh, these are global things that are going on and they're big things that are affecting us in very significant ways. Some we can control and some we can't. Uh, but I have to tell you that I am fully confident and have a high level of faith in the future of the southern system. Uh, this is a, a serious storm that we're in, but we've weathered storms before. And ultimately, when it's all said and done, uh, if the Jaguar Nation is called to task, it rises to the task. I'm convinced that uh, when we shape a common vision, when we march in a common direction and we will hold hands and, and face this challenge, you know, not only by uh, offering constructive insight and criticism, but also by, you know, stretching ourselves to the limit in terms of our energy as well as our financial contributions, uh, we can make this happen. Uh, I see a bright future for the Southern system. Uh, when we get through this year, uh, I think that we'll be headed in the right direction on solid footing and doing what we need to do in order to make sure that Southern is here not only for our children but for our children's children and for our children's children's children. So we'll see you on our next VChat. If you have more questions send them in uh, to me directly or through Robin or through our staff and let me close by saying what obviously everybody else is saying now when they close their talks to the Southern system which is God bless the Jaguar Nation. <laughs>